Edward VIII was king for one year before he abdicated the throne in order to marry the woman he loved. What movies and TV shows do we have about this historical event? Let's take a look. In order of release, Edward and Mrs. Simpson is a television series from 1978. It's seven episodes, about 50 minutes each. All ages are welcome. The Woman He Loved is a movie that came out in 1988 and was an hour and 40 minutes long. Again, safe for all ages. Wallace and Edward is a movie that came out in 2005 and was an hour and 34 minutes long. It wasn't officially rated, but I would say around 13 plus. W.E. is a 2011 movie, one hour and 58 minutes long, and for adults only. First up, Edward and Mrs. Simpson. This series begins right before the then prince, or as his family called him, David, meets Wallace, and he's quite scandalously dating other inappropriate women. It ends right after the abdication when the two get married. Script. An almost equal amount of time is given to David and Wallace and the Prime Minister, the King's advisors, and others who were important figures at the time. In fact, I would say the script's focus is more about the process leading up to the abdication than any romance between David and Wallace. Yes, the romance is there, but it's just as important to this series that we see how everyone around them is affected and the steps taken leading up to the abdication. Acting. David, played by Edward Fox, might be my favorite actor for this role. You feel the great respect he has for his people and the country, you know, come through in his performance, especially towards the end. Cynthia Harris as Wallace Simpson was portrayed as clever and a woman who knows what she wants, and she does genuinely seem to care for David. Production design and costuming. This takes place during the 1930s, and the costuming was spot on. Nothing stood out to me or was glamorous here, but I didn't feel it took away from the story it was telling. Sex and nudity, violence and gore. No sex or nudity at all. Lots of shooting of innocent animals in Africa in the first episode, so be ready if that sort of thing makes you cringe. Next, we're looking at The Woman He Loved. This movie actually starts with David's death, then flashes back to Wallace getting married to her second husband, Ernest Simpson. It ends with David and Wallace's marriage and, simultaneously, David's funeral. Script. The movie is from Wallace's point of view and honestly doesn't paint her in a very positive light. From the get-go, this movie shows Wallace to be borderline obsessed with the prince. Very quickly, we see her trying to get his attention while ignoring her husband. It continuously flashes back and forth between the early relationship of David and Wallace and the aftermath of David's death. There's very little politics at all, other than to let us know the country isn't happy. Acting. Wallace Simpson is played by Jane Seymour. I thought she was gorgeous and very good in the role, but this version of Wallace is clearly the schemer. I couldn't tell if she genuinely cared about the prince or just the title he brought with him. Anthony Andrews as David was not bad in the role, but he actually doesn't get all that much screen time or depth. He's mostly just there to show us how easily and quickly he falls for Wallace. Production design and costuming. One thing definitely in this movie's favor is it's pretty. The costumes make me want to go to a 1930s costume party. Also, I thought the sets and filmography were particularly well done. Sex and nudity, violence and gore. None of either. Nothing to keep the kids out of the room, though they'll most likely be bored. Wallace and Edward. This movie starts with Wallace and her husband, Ernst, attending a dinner with the prince and ends with Wallace and David's wedding. Script. Again, this is mostly from Wallace's point of view. However, this time it's the prince doing all the chasing. The script is more dramatic and emphasizes their passionate, forbidden romance, going so far as showing Wallace dangerously sneaking out of hotels and throwing in high suspense music. There is some show of background politics in Parliament, but nothing that lasts very long. Some cameos of other members of the royal family, but not as much as the previous two options. Acting. This is my favorite Wallace Simpson, played by Jolie Richardson. In this version, she is more innocent in her wanting to become friends with the prince and is definitely portrayed as being more realistic of her situation. 
She is constantly fighting against the divorce to her husband and even is shown aggressively trying to leave the prince, doing everything she can to encourage him not to give up the kingship for her. This time it's David, played by Stephen Campbell Moore, who adamantly cries out for her to stay. He comes off as very lovesick, spouting lines like, If you leave me, I'll die. I would say this version of David is also the most naive about how his actions affect the rest of the country until it's spelled out for him. Production design and costuming. It's not that it's bad, but it does that early 2000s thing of constantly having super close-up shots that drive me crazy. Other than that, nothing else really stood out to me. Sex and nudity, violence and gore. No full nudity or anything graphic, but we do have our first passionate sex scene with these two and lots of making out. Zero violence or gore. Lastly, we're looking at W.E., as far as the story of David and Wallace goes, it covers from when Wallace is young and abused by her first husband, all the way until David's death. Script. This is a very confusing script at first. It's actually about a woman in 1998, Wally Winthrop, who is fascinated by the life of Wallace Simpson. She is neglected and abused by her husband and seems to use David and Wallace's story as an escape. It continuously flashes back and forth between Wally and Wallace's stories. Wally even sometimes talks to Wallace as if she is in the room with her. We see the story and romance of Wallace and David play out in flashes and not as a continuous story. Very few cameo appearances of other members of the royal family and basically nothing political. This is the tragic story of a woman who sees and explores the parallels of her own life and Wallace Simpson's. Acting. Wallace Simpson is played by the very talented Andrea Riseborough. She is a very fun and lively interpretation of Wallace, and you get the impression she did not mean for all this to happen. Of all the different versions, this is the one we are meant to feel the most bad for. James D.R.C. as David is more of a supporting role this time around and did a fine job, but didn't really stand out to me. Production design and costuming. This was written and directed by Madonna, and her glamorous and sometimes edgy style shows through. Unfortunately, though, I didn't feel the time change between the 30s and the 90s visually very clearly, which made it even harder to keep up with the competing storylines. Sex and nudity, violence and gore. This is not for children. We have full body nudity and graphic abuse. Definitely hard to watch at times. Final opinion, Edward and Mrs. Simpson. If you are less focused on the romance between Wallace and David and are really interested in what's going on with everyone else and politically, this is by far your best option. The woman he loved. Personally, I was not a huge fan of this one, but if you want to see the most ambitious and scheming version of Wallace, this is it. Wallace and Edward. This is the option I recommend you go for if you want to watch the most romanticized and passionate version of their story with a little bit of soap opera thrown in. W.E. This was personally my least favorite option since it felt really disjointed with the two different stories being told at once, but I would say go here if you want to see Wallace as a tragic figure and don't mind very heavy scenes of abuse. That's it. As a reminder, this did not include anything from before the 1960s and no docudramas. If there are any of those you recommend, please let us know in the comments. Thank you so much for watching.